Well, hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. We are picking up on part two of a RV inspection that uh, we did for Sid and Trisha on their new RV. And so if you missed part one, click the link above and it'll bring you to part one. It'll make a whole lot more sense where you get to meet Sid, meet Trisha, watch us do the whole outside perimeter inspection. And uh, on this video, we're gonna bring the inside, raising the whole thing up and opening, looking at the canvas of, the, of their RV and everything like that. So go watch part one first and then join us here on part two. So let's go get busy. We're gonna pick up right where we left off when we cut the, uh, where we spliced off of part one to part two. So join us on this next journey together. Look forward to seeing you on the inside of this video. Okay. So at this point, let's go ahead and raise it up. Um, let me move my tools out of the way. Oh, and here's another tool we make, uh, tech cards. So you just clip them to your tool bag and you've got other little little cheater cards to, to see stuff. Um, all right, so let's pull this. Okay, there's the light show. So we're good here, everything's fine. Um, all right, I'm gonna just put that in that battery cover. Okay, now to raise these. And because, because we're gonna be uh, working on this regulator, I don't know that I'm gonna, I just don't wanna lose a part, so I'm gonna just take a second and put all these back together. But um, we're gonna be working on this regulator a little bit. Now on an RV like this, they make the standard rate, low flow rate, and high flow rate. Um, if you're gonna go with MEC, MEC makes them in with a blue body, a, a standard body, which is like the aluminum pot color or a green body. So for an RV like this, since it's not gonna consume that much LP, then I would recommend going with a low flow. There's, they're not gonna benefit anything going with a high flow. Okay, so our crank handle is over here on the step. I'm just gonna reach for it. Okay, so we've gone around and opened up all our latches. This little hatch opens and we're gonna lock that and open. Feed that in here. Okay, now this. Okay, I'm gonna be honest. When we um, first did this, this was a bear to open and I took some of my little green spray that you know that I like so much with the Teflon and I just squirted some of the pulleys, just a shot here and there and that made it a lot easier. Um, so we are gonna be giving this whole unit a system of lubrication in all of its spots. I think the biggest problem with this RV is it's just been neglected and not really maintained. Things that, you know, loose hardware pieces and um, it just could benefit. The cables look great. The shuttle here looks great. Um, so no problems there. All of our hitches, the rot that's inside is not a major, major problem. Um, but yeah, if we could, it's like having a house, you got to squeak, uh, um, lubricate your squeaky doors. Um, That sound is the like a ratchet to, so if I let go of this thing, it's not gonna collapse on me. So we're gonna keep this going up until it stops. Um, yeah, we're, up, we're all the way up. So I'll just, I'll just leave this in this area right here. Now, I, if I can, I don't want to pull this out just yet because I do want to do an LP pressure test on this. Um, even though it's the old regulator, we'll go ahead and do an LP pressure test on it, okay? The best place to do that would probably be at the stove. Um, this unit does not have a refrigerator. It does have a stove. It did have a water heater, but that was taken out. And maybe, maybe where the water heater was, there's a, a cap. Let's take a peek. Uh, Let's see here. It's not obvious. Maybe they ran it through the floor. Let's peek under the floor. And what I'm looking for is an LP line. No, I do not see that. So, okay, here I see the LP. Okay, the LP caps off. Okay, and uh, it's got an axle. All right, so when they took the water heater out, they did a good job. 
they, they took the fitting, made a new flare, made a 90 degree, and it comes up and feeds the stove. So they capped it off properly. Uh, so it's not like we could just tap into it down there. A lot of times when people take a refrigerator out, they'll, the, the hose is still sticking there with the cap on it. Um, but this one, they did it right. So we'll be checking the LP at the stove. Okay, so we'll go around here. So what I'm saying is, I wanna do an LP pressure test and I'd like to still have access to this. So I don't wanna pull this out just yet. So let's pull the other one out and see if we can get to the stove that way, maybe, or maybe a little halfway, cause we're still gonna need to get under here and I don't wanna to have to duck all the time. So let's come to the back. So on these, it would be good. What I'd like to do, we have a pop-up camper ourselves, and um, what I did was the hardware was fine. It just needed some tightening screws and lubricating pieces and parts like that. So that's what we'll be doing to this one, just lubricating this. And where I took my little Teflon spray, it was on this, you see the cables and things. So we'll pull this out. Okay, it's all the way out. Underneath there's these little downriggers. So I'm gonna crawl underneath here. And uh, there's one. There's one. And I'll just lift with my back a little bit. Not a big deal. Okay. And then that happens. I know how this is gonna go. I'm gonna do this one, the other one's gonna fall. There we go. Okay, so that's gonna support the the slide out. And we'll just kind of fluff this a little bit. So when we raise that bar on the inside, this is kind of ready to go. Um, all right, so let's open up this side on the inside and we'll see if we can get to our stove. Nope, we can't get to the stove. <laughs> so we'll pull this one out a little bit. Get to the stove there. The stove is right there. Okay, I can get to the stove with that. So we're gonna come in here. And I need to get to the bottom side of the stove where I can tap into the LP lines. So these stoves have screws on the sides. So I'm taking the screw out. It's a long screw. Almost there, there it is. Okay. Okay, so what we're after is this nut right here. So if we're gonna do an LP pressure test, some of you might just go to this hose bud, this, this stove bud. But if you notice, there's another regulator right here. So if we're gonna do a proper LP pressure test, we need to do it from here, before this regulator. Because if I were to take a burner off, connect my manometer right to one of these stove buds, then I'm not knowing what the full pressure is coming out of that cylinder up front. I only know that if I'm checking it this side. So we need to turn the cylinder off, crack this open, put our adapter in here and connect our manometer at this point. Not at this point. Now, you are allowed to take a burner off. There's a little, this connects onto a little bud and do a leak test there, but it is incorrect to do your incomplete operating pressure and um, lockout pressure test here at the stove downstream of this regulator because this regulator is gonna tell you what this regulator is set for, not what we're pressurized up to upstream. So. One of the things I wanna do on this inspection is check the LP pressure, okay? So we're going to loosen this nut. I'll put an adapter on there and put my manometer on it. Now, one thing I'll mention, I'm licensed, certified, trained, manager level for LP working on RVs. Different states are gonna have different laws. So if you're gonna work on LP on your RV, I implore you, please check with your state to find out if you, or as an RVer, are allowed to do this, or if you need to have a licensed person do it, okay? So what you'll see me do here in just a minute is 
I'm licensed and certified and all the insurance and everything to do this kind of work. So it seems very simple, but there is a lot behind what we're working on here. And I would say that a lot more RVs burn down because of electrical problems than LP problems. And part of the reason is because anybody in Alberta law can work on an electrical on an RV. I'm just trying, that's my redneck voice. Hey, I'm redneck, I appreciate that. But a lot of people can feel that they can work on electrical but no one's gonna work on LP. And so I think the reason you have so many fires on RVs causing by electrical is because you've got people out there that are doing it and they haven't been through all the training. And you don't have a lot of fires on RVs with LP because people are afraid of LP and they let the professionals, certified people that have been to school work on the LP side. So that's my point. I guess the way my plane on that thought is if the only people that worked on RV electrical were people that are certified and knew what they were doing, I think you'd have less RV fires. And that follows with my thought that we have less LP fires because people that are working on LP are certified. So what you see me doing is because I've been through all kinds of schools and trainings and all this kind of stuff, I even make tools for LP systems, all based on the NFPA 1192. So a lot of the LP type stuff does come from the NFPA 1192.5 section so you can just it's wonderful reading i love reading that kind of stuff and uh ul uh oh, seven it's 798 789 something like that you got the ul code and the nfpa code talks all about lp okay so what i'm going to do is get my wrench backup wrench take this off put a fitting in there connect a manual manometer to it and uh, we'll check our pressure all right let's get doing that now Okay, so I've gone and gotten my manometer and all my tools, and um, we're going to be doing it here. Now, on my manometer, I like the slack tube a lot. I have the digital one over here. We could use a digital one and all this, but I like this one. But I want you to notice that I've added green coloring back to it, and it hasn't quite blended just yet. So there's a little bit of a green right here, but it's exactly even on that, on that zero right there. So one's going to go down, one's going to go up. Okay, so I am going to... I'd really like that to be level, but it's going to work. Um, okay, so I've also made sure that my cylinder has been turned off. So our cylinder's off, and we're going to open up this right here. We're always going to use a backup wrench. So... Now, another tool that we make, this seems like a, a shameless promotion, but the thing is, I do a lot of work with RVs and we don't have a Snap-on or a Matco or a Cornwell. We don't have that. So I make a lot of my own tools and uh, for doing this work. Uh, mechanics typically are not working on LP systems. So I do make a lot of LP tap jigs here. And uh, so the one I'm gonna use for this is, uh, I could use a standalone. Okay, so basically I've got, a quick release version of this and a standalone version of this. And the quick release version of this basically gives us this, um, you have a manometer or an adapter that connects. And the reason I would use this is let's say that I wanted to do a stove bud kind quick release, a right angle quick release. Um, maybe I'm gonna tap directly into a gas port quick release. I've got five different ways of tapping in to LP to check pressure or flow, okay? But for this purpose, I don't need the quick release kind. I'm just gonna use standalone. So I have five different ones that are quick release. And then I also make those in a version that are standalone. So this one's a standalone. And uh, we'll just take this little cap off the end, keeps the stuff from getting inside of it, keeps it clean. And um, so this guy goes right here. Everything's three eighths. Okay, and then we connect this like that. So um, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm zeroed out. Okay, so now I'm gonna close this valve. That is a number 41 hole, which is probably too large for this RV. This RV would probably benefit from a much smaller hole size. Now remember I mentioned about the RV tech cards. One of the RV tech cards we're coming out with is going to have what size hole based on what you're going to use it for. So in this RV, the only thing we're using propane for is the stove. The stove uh, has a BTU. I'm not, there's a glare on this. I'm not even going to figure out what it says, but um, because there's a, I could get my eyeball on it, but I'm not. I'm just going to make a point. Let's say that the BTU of this stove is is. I really want to know. 
because what you're going to do this is this this hole in this manometer is supposed to represent 50 percent of the load okay and um it's funny because in this RV, it wouldn't matter, but 50% of the load, they want 50% of the load because let's say you had a refrigerator on gas, your water heater's on, running on gas, your stove's running on gas, you got an oven running on gas. Do you have enough, do you have enough pressure to run your furnace also? And so with this being the only LP appliance except for the outside grill on this entire RV, there's no need to have a 50% load, but we're going to go through it anyway. So I've connected my manometer, I'm zeroed out my meniscus, and I'm at... So my point is this 50% load, <laughs> the 41 hole represents 75,000 BTUs. There's no way it's going to be right. So I'm going in with eyes wide open trying to explain that to you. So if we were going to be doing this kind of pop-up camper or truck campers or something really small all the time, then we would change out this plug with one that was the whole that had the right size hole in it that would match the right BTUs. So at this point, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna step out, I'm gonna go turn on the service valve of the cylinder, and this side's clear, so you can't see it very well, but this side's got the green in it, and you know, look at, one's gonna go up, one's gonna go down, and we're gonna count those two numbers. So now I'm in front of the cylinder, and I'm gonna turn on the cylinder. Okay, the cylinder's on. Okay, wow, he's way high. Um, he's very high. He's even off the scale. So we're at eight and eight, which is 16. That's an automatic fail. Um, so we're going to go ahead and I'll explain that in a minute. We're going to go ahead and bleed some of this out and see what it goes down to. So when I do my 50% load, I'm at like what? 3.2 and three, that's going to be 6.2. That's too low. So there may be oil in the line. I don't know. But again, like I said, that's oil in the line is me saying that if this was a true 50% load test. But the fact that this thing's going off the scale, that's an automatic fail. The most this thing is allowed to go is 15 inches of water column, which is going to be seven and a half, seven and a half, and we're over that. So that's an automatic fail. We already know that we need to replace the regulator anyway. So um, this doesn't surprise me. And, um, but that's how you would have done an LP pressure test with them. Um, now, just for funsies, let's take um, a digital manometer, okay? And uh, let me turn it on. So, and I, when I, I, I give you guys these little red caps just to keep the tips clean. So we want inches of water column. Okay, so this is off the scale. It looks like it's like 7.9 and 7.9, so 15.8 or something like that. So LP is gonna squirt just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now the, interestingly, this thing's showing 12.8. Let's see what our 50% load is. Look, 4.1. But again, that's a number 41 hole. So, um, so I don't know which one to believe. I would much rather believe the manometer because it's straight up legit. Um, so I'm getting 12 inches of water column on the um, digital. But when I switch over here to the, the, the slack tube, I'm pretty high. Let's hold it level and see if that makes a difference. Oh, it did. Ha! Huh. Okay, so I just learned something. It does have to be level. So this guy is at, uh, what is that, five point? What are, you, what are you coming in at? And I'm seeing my green is starting to mix, so I'm kind of happy about that. So you're at about 5.6 and 6. So that's what, 11.2? Uh, Ah, 12.2, and what did this thing say? This, so the slack tube's saying about 12.2, and let's see what this says again. I just saw 12.2, so 12. So they're pretty close to each other. They're within two tenths of each other, so that's that's kind of exciting. Um, so anyway, um, so yeah, if you got your slack tube, don't have it at an angle. Hold it up and down. So I'm going to say that the, the propane's fine. Okay, the next thing we would do is check for leaks. And the way we check for a leak is I'm gonna go turn off the cylinder and we're just gonna sit here and we're gonna take some of the pressure off of this. And I like to get it around eight. And then we're gonna watch to see if the pressure goes up or see if the pressure goes down. So let, I'll just leave it on the digital because it's funner to watch those numbers. So let me go turn the cylinder off. Okay. So cylinder is off and we're gonna, I'm gonna watch this number until I get to about eight. So I'm bleeding out, and it'll buck all at once. It'll see it buck. If we don't get headaches from the LP. Luckily, it's a windy day. We got the door open. 8.5. You'll see it buck. 
you want to get the head pressure off this thing. There it is, right there. It just started the buck. Okay, so it went back up again. Hold on, let me. See. So you want to get the head pressure off. Oh, I lost it. I'm going to tell you, we're going to be replacing the regulator. And we're going to do it anyway. But anyway, so you get this number to eight, which is about, you're not at the maximum lockout pressure, but you're also not at the minimum pressure. And so you're going to be watching that number. If the number starts to go up from eight, because let's say we've established our lockout pressure was at 14. Okay. So if you start off at eight and the thing starts to go up, 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 that means there's a problem with your um, service valve. The service valve did not close all the way. So maybe there's a, a issue there. Okay. So when you close that service valve, that should shut off all propane. So if propane's going up right away. That service valve didn't close. So maybe there's an issue there. That's why the reasons we get them inspected. If the pressure goes down, that could mean that there's a leak. Typically that means that there's a leak, but um, it could also mean your vent is clogged and um, that rubber diaphragm we talked about in the very beginning isn't able to move. So maybe your regulator has kind of gotten fatigued and it's not breathing like it's supposed to. So those would be some things that you would look for. And that's why we put it in the middle to see if the number goes up or a number goes down. Okay. If you're rarely, rarely your propane cylinder could be overfilled. And if your propane cylinder is overfilled, then um, um, the first notice you're going to know, you're going to see some oil weeping around your regulator over there. But another thing that we see oftentimes is cylinders that were filled that were not properly purged. So the only thing we should ever have in that cylinder is liquid propane and propane vapor. That's it. I did not say oxygen. I did not say air. I did not say water. Liquid propane is filled in. It becomes vapor. We consume it as a vapor in the RV industry. And so if that RV cylinder, if that propane cylinder was not purged properly and there's some kind of air element in there, to forget about ever trying to get a good number on this thing. So for those of you that are, or you, you're, you're an RV technician and you, you got that furnace, reg you can't seem to get that furnace regulator dialed in right, refrigerators woofing and popping, check the cylinder, make sure the cylinder has been purged properly. Put on a known good cylinder. I carry a known good cylinder in my service trailer, and I'm looking for things like that, um, that uh, the cylinder wasn't purged properly. And how much air is in it? Ah, who knows? Who knows? But um, so those would be some best take, some takeaways from there. So anyway, there's your propane portion of the program. Um, I am going to just leave these things here, and let's pick up with putting this thing back together and doing an inspection on the inside, okay? So we just came out of the LP portion of the program and I just noticed like this is the kind of stuff I'm talking about. So this is the screw. We just need to go through and just f tighten little screws, lubricate the tracks, but all the rollers and everything are fine. It's little stuff like this. So now that we've done the propane, I've got my cylinder turned back off. Um, normally you would check for leaks. Um, I've got the cylinder turned off and I'm going to leave it off until I put a new regulator on. But you saw how we did the pressure test, the lockout pressure test. The last thing you do is put everything back together. That's when you would maybe take that stove bud and do a pressure leak test. You could take your better bubble, squirt all over there. Uh, or it's that blue stuff you put on. It looks for huge giant bubbles. Um, so that's when you would check it at the stove. So we've got our cylinder off. I'm making sure one last time. Yep, the cylinder's off. One last thing on the cylinder, you're ever going to open it all the way or close it all the way. And you might notice when you are turning that cylinder, when you get all the way to one end or the other, it, it kind of hard, it, it kind of binds out. That's a bonnet inside that cylinder that's closing all the way up or closing all the way down. And that's important. That's part of its safety feature. So we're going to go ahead and pull this out. And this is where the, uh, a little bit of lubrication on those tracks would really help. And uh, we'll use my back again. So I'm gonna crawl underneath here. Open these down. And you'll see these little studs. That's where they're gonna go to. go there's one there we go okay so we're good there all right we're gonna fluff this because we're gonna go on the inside and raise those arms I'm also when I'm doing this I'm looking at the fabric fabric looks really good I don't smell any mold Floor feels really solid. Now he's put a new floor in here, but underneath you could see the uh, OSB boards not rotten at all. So I'll start on this end. 
And I'm just gonna take that pipe and kind of attach it and lift it up. And then we're gonna look at the all fabric. So I'm gonna take this stool right here. We've already fluffed our fabric. So when we raise this, this arm, we pretty the fabric should fall out of our way. Just like that, okay? So then this latches on in this hole here. Okay, and we'll go to this side. While we're here, let's... So again, these curtains, they could use a good lubrication and make them slide a little bit easier. So one thing that I'm looking at my inspection is the curtains are not torn, they're not ripped. Um, this lifts up like this. There's a drain hose for the sink that we were trying to clear. And so down here we have the couch and the bed. Uh, it looks like, I'm just gonna park him here. And okay, it looks like this guy goes. Cause I'm after getting this out of the way. And that's what I wanna do. So we've already fluffed our fabric, made our fabric kind of loose. And, oh, it's right here. <laughs> I'm looking for it in there. So we just line the holes, okay. And this is gonna go in that socket. Pop it in place. Now let's go outside and look at our fabric from the outside and make sure it's like secured and see what we find. So, Gonna pull it over. We've worked on a couple different pop-ups and the way they attach down here is a little different. Um, let's put this under here. So now you know why, there's our keys. Now you know why I wanted to work on the propane before I slid this thing out or else I'd have to crawl under. Now um, we'll start here on this one. They have this little hardened piece. It's just gonna tuck right under that and uh, uh here's what i'm looking for okay so this shock cord should come all the way to here in this little piping right here and then on the back you'll see these little eyelets and eyelets um on the underside there's clips so on my report the shock cord would probably benefit from either being probably being replaced um it, it's it, it's going to be pulled too tightly so the shock cord needs to be replaced let's go to the other side and i'll show you how the shock cord should work but uh, this one we could just get another shock cord we can pick whatever color sid and trisha choose and, and kind of refeed it through the piping here but let's go to the other side and see something so on this side we have this little profile that tucks under now here's here's what the shock cord should look like with a little hook on it and if we go under you're gonna see right there a little anchor point right there and then if we look here's our shock cord again and I'm not even gonna look there's where it's supposed to hook and then I'm gonna go right here and there it's supposed to hook so and it goes all the way around and that's what keeps this in place so we've noticed that on the other side the shock cord is is broken so we'll pull a new shock cord around and um but that's how that works and so this side's done now they do have a little piece of velcro right here to, to secure it so now i'm looking at the fabric the fabric looks really amazingly good i almost want to say i don't know is it possible that this fabric is 31 years old i don't know it's almost like they replace the fabric at some point because this fabric is in pristine mint condition for a 31 year old rv i'm not even in that good a condition i'm 56. um but yeah this uh yeah, it doesn't have any mold smell. It looks fantastic, no stains. So it's almost like somebody put new fabric on this is what I would say. So, and um, it's just in too good of a shape for being this old. Um, so now we're working our way around. So we know the drill, we pull it and tuck it. 
it's like that movie Plunge and Scrub. And uh, so here, okay, here's our shock cord, which we expected to see. Tuck that under. And there is our anchor point. So right here we expect, yep. And all the way around is where we would find the, here it is again right here. And I'm just not even gonna look. It's right there. And we would go all the way around with it. Good. Ah, shark cart's gone. Okay, so looks like it stops right here. So, yeah, I'll add that to the list along with the light and the regulator and all the other things that we need to do new shock cord. But um, Velcro right here, fabric looks fantastic. It really does. So I'm just looking at how it's connected up here. Everything looks good. So, um, it looks like I could go up a little higher. Let me see. I just see some slack in it. I need to maybe go up a little higher. I don't know. Okay, let's see what that did. So the fabric looks really, really, really good. It, there's no tears, no stains, no smell. Um, so now we're gonna look at the door. Now, I do see this ceiling has this, it looks like it's rotting. That goes back to the roof. We're gonna reseal the roof. But uh, this, perhaps at some point it was holding water, I don't know. It looks like the previous owner even put a one by four here to kind of hold it from sagging. Um, so this would be, for some people, this might be a deal breaker if you're looking at your RV and you see this roof. Um, I don't mind doing this kind of work and I don't mind doing it for Sid and Trisha. So one of the things we'll be doing over the next year or so is be replacing this. I think that might be really nice to get some shag carpeting up here. It might be really, really groovy. Um, I went to, uh, what is it? Where, where's Elvis's place? What is that place called? Grace, Graceland. Yeah, and he had that basement with the green shag carpet. And um, so I think shag carpet up here. I'm gonna be really campaigning for, for shag carpet. I think that'd be really cool. So I'm looking here. This whole vestibule looks really nice. Looks really, really good. I'm gonna say this fabric has been replaced. It's just, it's just too, too clean, too good um, for being a 31-year-old RV. Um, like I said, I don't even look this good. So the bed, now I'm gonna lift this up. I don't see any mold or stains or water damage in there. Um, like I said, we'll run through this with some screwdrivers and just tighten all the hardware and lubricate everything. But that looks good. Let's check over here as well. Um, I'm gonna take this table and put it over here now for the, uh, the, the drop test. And uh, so again, I'm looking at the wood. I don't smell any rot. I don't see any rot. I don't see any water stains. And it, it's almost like maybe the wood was even replaced at some point because that is in perfect shape of wood. Um, so maybe when they did the floor, the floor doesn't have any rot soft spots in it or anything like that. So uh, it even has a solid sound to it. Um, so now um, we should go connect water to this and look for water leak tests and, fl and flood testing where we're gonna fill up our water tank. Um, so, and then I'll go through cabinets. I'm wiggling them, making sure all the knobs and everything are nice and tight. Um, uh, 27 cents in the drawer. Some pepper, a mirror, um, sink strainer. Uh, I see some loose wiring here. Not exactly, don't recognize the color code. Not that you ever look at wire and judge it by its colors. Uh, let's see what we see underneath here. 
I also see a disconnected hose fitting and perhaps that goes to the sink if the sink has hot and cold. Uh, looks like it does. So the other end of this would go to the sink. I can't get my eye on it all the way. But um, so I, see, I have a disconnected hose. I would write that up on my report that the hose is disconnected. You know, you go ahead and turn your water on and do your flood test and water starts squirting out of the thing. Um, on the water test, sometimes if, if it's an RV that I'm a little bit suspicious about, I'll test it with air pressure and not water pressure and listen for air leaks and see if it'll hold the air pressure. A uh, little tip there. So I got some wire coming in here. I don't know exactly what this is for. Um, so three wires could be water heater, three wires. Uh, there is no furnace here, but it looks like there's a cut out where a furnace might be. Sid and Trisha do want a furnace in this RV. It does not have one. It did not come with one. So one of the things we're going to be doing is adding a furnace to this. And we'll make a video of us doing that. It'll be part of Poppy's playlist. Poppy's playlist. I like the sound of that. So uh, I'm thinking the furnace would go right in here, maybe in this little spot right here or this spot right here. But one of these two places is where the furnace will go. Um, it just got a good wall and maybe it's pre-wired for a furnace. And that's what this wiring is for right here. Um, the reason I like this as a furnace location is because this part of the cabinet does not move. This one does. And we could put a furnace up here, but then your, your gas line and all your wiring would have to flex. Let's try to reduce that as much as possible. So here's our GFCI. I would like to plug this into shore power and check our GFCI. And then I would also go down to the electrical panel, take the cover off and tighten all the screws and make sure that they're torqued properly. We're looking for about 35 inch pounds of torque. If you don't have a torquing screwdriver, you're going to tighten it and then you're going to just go really tight and then you're going to go just a little bit more but not much more on your dc buses they don't want 30 uh 35 inch pounds those want closer to maybe at most 20 inch pounds which is not super duper tight because you're screwing them onto a motherboard but the uh the bus bars where your neutrals and your grounds go you want those at 35 inches uh inch pounds of torque okay so we would look for okay it looks like this is just cold water so maybe this is plumbed for hot water, but since there's no water heater, they took off the hot water fitting. I'm gonna assume that that's what happened here without running around and looking where the wires go. Um, so it looks like we got an old percolator coffee pot. That's kind of cute. Um, a light with a cigarette lighter. It's got a bulb in it. And, um, eh. And then the cigarette lighter thing that connects like up to these things where you can have a light over your bed. Uh, here's our gas line coming in for the stove right back there. Um, this is the cabinet that opens up to the outside so you can get to it from both sides. Uh, we're just checking all the cabinets. I'm feeling for the hardware. The hardware feels good. I'm looking at hardware, uh, screws, smells. Uh, do the drawers open properly? Looks like we got some uh, wipes and hair things. I'm glad because my hair is getting kind of long. Um, oh, we got some matches, some salt and pepper, and some utensils. Ladle can opener. That's kind of nice. Now, let's see what we got down here. Um, I have a water pump. Underneath here is a switch that is, when you put this over, it's going to depress a switch, which is going to allow the lights to work. Um, if, the, if you take this down, then the switch is opened and the lights do not work. That is to say, when you're in travel mode and this thing's all broken down, there's no way for have any lights working because that's a switch underneath here. Uh, the switch looks good. Um, I see a water pump. Um, I see where the LP line comes in and that's would have been where they um, put the elbow on it, which they did a good job. Uh, water filled tank and Yep, I don't see any leaks under the pump. It's actually there's a little fine layer of dust, which is fine with me. Um, if they had a, a clean spot, that would be an indication that it's leaking. No problems underneath there. We got an on off switch. Oh, that's our water pump switch. I just heard the water pump. Okay, so now it's on. So if we have water pressure, we might have sinks. So now I'm checking the water. Okay, water pump's working. You just saw that, found the switch, turning it on and off. 
and hopefully we don't have any leaks. But if the pump is on, if the, if the pump is energized, but it stays off, that would be an indication that there's no leaks. If the pump was on, nah, -uh. if the pump was energized and it ran and then stopped, ran and then stopped, ran and then stopped um, at a cyclic pattern river, then you have a leak somewhere. Okay. Um, so that's our switch for our water pump. So I'm happy to hear that the water pump's working just fine. So we have some more drawers. Looks like we've got a first aid kit, some more matches, a little broom and some tape, um, fly swatter, um, first aid kits, deck of cards, flashlight fuses, um, paracord. Okay. We can, we know that they put a new floor in because when I pull the drawer out and look, um, I see the old floor. Um, uh, these are usually BC, yeah, these are usually BC fire extinguishers. I like an ABC. A is going to help you put out the fire. Um, but, uh, these are good. Sometimes you turn them upside down and thump them really good on the back with a rubber mallet that helps to equalize them. This would probably, we got to figure out where the switch is. Is there a patio light? Nope. So it'd be nice to figure out where the switch goes. It goes. It goes into this wall here. Um, so I'm wondering. I'm wondering if it's the ceiling lights. I don't know. No. Let's see here. So at this point, I would maybe get my meter and try to trace out where that goes. I don't have any lights up in the ceiling, but the fact that I have a water pump tells me I have electricity. So let me check my switch underneath here to see if uh, that switch is being compressed. There we go. Okay, so there's that. Okay, so let's turn this off. Nope, okay. So uh, that's a mystery. So we need something to push down on this switch. So Okay, we need something to push down on that. Let's see what we can find here. Uh, I'm looking, I'm looking. That might work. More, more power. Uh, I'm looking for something. Ah, all right. Here, a little blue wire thing. If I could get it on there just right. There we go. <laughs> okay, so now we have lights in the ceiling. So that'll be another something that I'll be looking at is the switch is fine and maybe it just needs to be pushed up a little bit more or something needs to punch it more. So um, the lights are working like they should. Still don't know what that switch does. Um, Let's see, is there an outside patio light of anyway? It's on. Oh, yep, there's a light right underneath here. Okay, so this light, there's a light underneath here. So that turns this light on. Okay, yay. All right. See, isn't this fun? It's like playing deductive. Um, so now we've looked at our vestibules. Everything's looking good. Another thing I do not see in this RV which I have on my pop-up, pop which I really like, is a, a ceiling vent, like a vent fan. Um, so that if it gets hot in here, you could just, you don't need an air conditioner, you're turning the vent. So now let's look at the last couple items and then we'll be done. We're gonna look down in here. So this is the wall. So it's solid right here, but it's rotten right here. So this panel would need to be replaced. Uh, this is the inside of the stove. Looks like they gave us some rope and uh, uh, some rope and a drawer. 
more rope, a zipper. Okay, so that's it's nice that there's a drawer here. Uh, we know our water pump switch is there. Okay, this side's got some action going on with it. Okay, in here, um, okay, so this, this valve on the outside was how you're gonna drain this tank. Um, and then this goes to the water pump. This went to the old water pump. This is how the overflow, this is the fill. Okay, got it. And uh, he's just got a lot of remnant stuff in here. Oh, look, he's got uh, shock cord. So he's already got shock cord. So he's already got the shock cord that we need to make the fix. Some leftover flooring. Um, so for us to put a water heater in here, we might need to take this tank out. But I'm looking and everything looks good. This looks like it's bent a little bit, but he probably had to take this out to get the tank in. Bungee cords. Um, all right, then that leaves, he's got a, battery meter here, 12.5. Uh, so it looks like he's got a, a, a battery intelligence meter here. Uh, those things need to be trained. And then um, if we were to take this off, we would torque our neutral and our ground, um, making sure that the neutral and ground are not touching in any way, shape or form. You do not want your neutral and your ground to touch inside your electrical panel. The neutral and ground touch at the source where the power comes from. If you're connected at your house, then that's the breaker panel in your house, neutral and ground are bonded, not at the RV. So we keep neutral and ground totally separate within the RV. But, um, so we wanna make sure that they're not that way and we wanna torque all of our grounds and all of our neutrals. And on the breakers themselves, the breaker, if you look at the breaker on the side of the breaker, it'll tell you what the torque value is supposed to be based on the gauge of wire you're using. Um, so then we've got some fuses here and uh, this wall looks a little weak. So, um, back in there there's a whole big void back in there so there's some fun stuff we can play with back in this area if we needed to add more stuff but um anyway uh i give this rv a solid whew, c minus um mostly it's, it's because the rod in the ceiling and the rod on that wall that's the only thing i see that i do not like the rest of it i like i think it's a good rv um uh, but we knew when we looked at it the first time about this rot and we and the desire is to add some features and so we'll make poppy's playlist we'll be adding more things to it and um oh we never put the door in let's put the door together and i'm um, looking at that so you guys can watch me struggle putting the door in so i'm basically going to fold it down and um okay So yes, it would definitely benefit from um, lubrication. There we go. So everything's working, it just needs to be lubricated and then put the seals on and all that kind of stuff. So I think I'm done. Okay, folks, well, that was a long video for us. We really had a good time making it for you guys. We hope it added value to you. If you watched part one and part two, you've been hanging with us for quite a while now, and hopefully I didn't bore you too much with going into too much details on things. Um, on a side note, it was exciting for me to introduce you to some of the tools that I'm making. If you're an RV technician and you do this as your profession, like I do, some of these tools like that uh, LP tap jig, those test lead set, and what I'm working on right now is that uh, RV light show. Those would be great things. And you can find those on our website, just myrvworks.com. Just click on those orange boxes and you can find, navigate around our site and you can find our T3 interface parts. So if you found value to this, folks, give us a thumb up. It really helps us. And subscribe to our channel, ring the bell for notifications, and be looking for Poppy. She's going to have her own playlist and all these things that we talked about that we found. We'll make standalone videos for all those. And um, if you like doing this as a profession or you're interested in doing this as a profession, like what we do, um, what, what Trisha, myself, and my wife, Ann, are doing is we're putting together on our Patreon side a whole series of how to start, build, maintain, and operate your mobile service business. So basically, we've thrown the doors open. We invite you inside, asking us questions. 
kicking the tires, and we're basically sewing into you how we run our business so that you then can just kind of find our best practices and develop your own best practices. So that information is over on our Patreon side, and um, we have different tiers that you can pick from on how much in how involved you want to be with uh, access to us and asking us questions and things like that. So. We look forward to seeing you on our next live stream and um, hope this added value to you. So without any further wasting of anybody's time, this is Darren signing off from Joyce Washington on behalf of Sid, Trisha, Ann, and the whole team back here. Thank you for your attention and thanks for watching. See you on the next video. Bye.